And she was like, huh? and he was like, nah. and we was like, what? and she was like, huh? and he was like, nah. and we was like, what? Yeah. Hello, and welcome to the Just Ask Joey podcast. I'm Joey, and this is a place where you can ask anything. You want some information on health? You need some advice in relationships? You need some advice for kind of anything that's going on in your life? This is a place to go. Uh, who am I to offer advice, you ask? Do I have a degree in anything? No, I mean, I have degrees, but not degree in like therapy or anything. So you are getting advice from somebody who has been through a lot of stuff, all my fault, and wants to develop a place where people can ask questions and help them get through their issues. When I was going through my stuff, there weren't, it didn't feel like there were a whole lot of places that I could actually turn to to get advice, to ask questions. So I'm hoping that this can be that place for you or for somebody you know. Um, everything is totally anonymous here. I don't read names of the people that are asking the questions. Unless you want a shout out on here, I can, I can totally do that. But this is totally anonymous. So when you're going through whatever it is that you're going through, if I have an answer, I'll tell you. And if I don't have an answer, I'll tell you that also. Because I don't want to be giving talk blowing smoke up your butt about something that I really don't know about. But the amount of stuff that I went through and the amount of stuff that I've learning and continue to learn, I think this is a great place to get some questions and get some answers. So today's questions, how important are looks in life? And I think the PC term is looks don't matter. You know, it's the person. And I 100% agree and 100% disagree with that. I think looks are extremely, extremely important. Two parts. One, you have to have confidence in your looks, and that's extremely important. And two, you have to understand how other people see you. So you have to be comfortable with how you look for you, but you also have to be comfortable with how you look for other people. So let's take part one, confidence in your looks. When you're in a crowded room and somebody walks in, and they're confident. You can see it. They don't have to say anything. They don't. You don't have to know about them. But they walk in and they. you can just see that they're comfortable in their skin. And you can see people faking it. And you can see people that aren't comfortable at all in their skin. Aren't comfortable at all with the way they look and, and the situations that they're in. But having confidence in your looks, you can project it to people. People can see it. Um. So if you're not confident in your looks, if you're not confident in how you look in that shirt, if you're not confident because you have a pimple on your face, if you're not confident because, you know, maybe you're uh, maybe you're in a business meeting and you don't feel that, you know, the information well enough to be in that meeting and you're uncomfortable. People can see it. You can try to mask it. You can try to fake it till you make it. But confidence is one of those things where you can even if you have to look a little a little closely at the person, you can really see confidence. Um, but the important thing is confidence is not a fixed thing. Confidence is something that you can work on. And you, what you really need to do is get deep inside and figure out what it is you're not confident about. Are you not confident about your face? Are you not confident about your hair? Are you not confident about your body? Like, what are you not confident about? But you have to be honest with yourself because if you're not going to be honest with yourself, you're never going to be able to fix it because you're not really ad addressing it. So, so truth is really important. People like to say, oh, hey, hey, no problem. Hey, I got it. I got this. No problem. No big deal. I don't care. But generally, people say that to other people. So they're trying to brush off how, how the lack of confidence. But then when those words come out of your mouth, you're also kind of tricking yourself. You're also saying, oh, well, maybe I'm not, you know, maybe I don't feel so bad or, or whatever. I don't care. But you do care. Because you walk in the room and I can see that you care. Now, whether you want to put the effort into that or not is up to you. But you don't have to feel however you feel when you lack confidence. You don't have to ever feel that way again. But you have to put in work in order to make yourself feel better and make yourself more confident. Um, some things that I did when I was, as you know, kind of at the bottom was I knew I had to be the best version of me possible. I had to be the strongest version of me. So that started with 
working out. It started with my diet. It started with sleep. It started with, you know, learning as much as I can and doing as much as I can and just kind of pushing through stuff because once you put in the time for yourself, you start to respect yourself more. You start, I mean, you start to care what you can see. You can say you don't, you don't care before, but once you start doing stuff psychologically, you start to care. That's why, um, remember when you were in school and the teacher always had like the one like real pain in the ass kid. And if you get them to do you a favor, pass out papers or clean or, or help them be like the teacher's aide. You notice the teacher's aide is usually the, the kid who's the biggest pain in the ass. Well, there's a reason for that because psychologically, once you do something nice for a person, psychologically, your brain tells you, okay, I just did something nice for this person. So I don't want to do something nice for somebody I don't like. So I'm going to, my brain starts spinning around and telling me that I do like them. It's the same thing that works for you. If you treat yourself like shit, if you treat your body like shit, if you eat a bunch of crap, if you don't sleep, if you drink too much, if you do all these things that make your body feel shitty, you feel shitty about yourself. But once you start taking care of yourself, once you start putting in the time with um, a purpose to get better and feel better and, and be a better version of you, you start telling you, you, you basically, your brain will tell you, Hey, this person's pretty cool. This is not bad. I feel better. They're making me feel better. I like this person. And that's all going on in your head. So it's a little, sounds a little hippie, sounds a little crazy, but that's, that's what happens. So you can, by taking steps to work on what it is that you're insecure about, you can actually get your brain to like yourself more and have more confidence because you know you're working on you. So you know when you ate, you know, when you passed on that pizza or you passed on that hamburger, you can feel good about that because the next day you're going to wake up and you're not going to have a pizza or a hamburger in your gut. You know that when you go to the gym, you know it's, it's doing good for you and you know it's helping your body get healthy. And you can walk around with that confidence. You see people that work out. There's, there's a lot of people that, that, that when they take care of themselves, they walk around with a lot of confidence. Now, you may not think that they deserve the confidence. You may not like them or whatever, but they walk around with confidence because they know they're taking care of themselves. So they can walk into a room and go, you know what? No matter what, I got me. I'm the best version of me. And they stop comparing themselves to other people because they're just working on, on them. So you can take those feelings and you can create them for yourself. You can create the, the, uh, the confidence in yourself because you are, um, because you're the one that's taking care of you. You're the one that's putting in the time. You know what you're doing and you know that you are are going to be the best version of you. And maybe it's not today, but you know it's a progress and you know that you can be confident in the progress. And then all of a sudden you start feeling better and feeling better and feeling better about yourself. And then you're the person that walks in that room and you're the person that owns that room and you're the person that looks comfortable in their skin. But it starts with addressing the weakness and then attacking the weakness. And once you get over your insecurities, and once you, instead of masking them, you're a, you're a stronger person. There are people like the Stoics will put themselves into adverse situations to feel uncomfortable, to then show themselves that they were able to get through whatever it is that they had to get through. And it's the same thing with, with what you're going through. If you have a lack of confidence in yourself, treat yourself better. Start doing the things that, that will make whatever it is that you're uncomfortable with yourself will make you feel better. And then... The energy comes out and people can see the confidence. Have you ever seen the, and then you become the person who maybe is not the best looking person in the room. Maybe he's not, you know, the most diet, the, 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 the most well-dressed, but there's something about that person with that confidence. There's something about the way they look because of the way they feel. And you can be that person. So number two, looks are important in the sense that you have to know how people perceive your looks. And this may be just a you thing. I know, I know for me, it was, I, I cared a lot less when I was younger because um, I wanted to keep it real. I wanted to keep it 100. I wanted to be, I wanted everybody to know every place I went to that I was into punk rock and I was a punk rocker and I had spiky hair and I had baggy pants and I, you know, because I wanted people to, that was kind of my identity. I want people to know who I was. But you have to know 
what people's reaction to you is going to be, and then you have to navigate that reaction. The worst thing you can do is keep it real and dress however you're going to dress and then expect people to treat you the way you want to be treated. You know that if you dress like I did, if I got chains and stuff on and baggy pants and spiky hair and I walk in someplace, people are going to go, what is the, what the hell's up with this with this guy? What's with the spiky hair? What's with the tattoos? What's with this? What's with that? And that's fine. Let them think whatever they want. It doesn't matter what people think of you. But you have to understand what it is that they're thinking so you can navigate around that. If you want to be a CEO, if you want to be a big, you know, a big time entrepreneur baller, you can walk into a meeting in sweats and a wife beater if you want, but you have to understand what are the other people at the table going to see when they see a CEO walk in with with sweats and a wife beater. And they can think whatever they want. They could think you're a piece of shit. They could think you're lazy. It doesn't matter. As long as you can deliver on what you're saying you're going to do, people will eventually come around. It may take a while. I mean, people people expect when you think CEO, I mean, just close your eyes right now and, and picture a CEO. When I think of a CEO, clean cut, suit, well-dressed, well-spoken, but that doesn't mean that that person is necessarily a good CEO. I mean, you could be a CEO and have all those things and be a shitty CEO. I mean, I think there's probably a lot of them, but you have to understand that that looks matter in the sense that in the same way that you, if a farmer walked into your office and said, hey, I'm your lawyer, and he's wearing overalls and a straw hat and has a straw coming out of his mouth, you're going to be like, hmm, maybe I, maybe I don't want to go with this guy. But if he delivers, he delivers, and that's the same thing with you. You don't want people to judge you. You want to be comfortable in your, in your skin. You want to be comfortable with what you're wearing, but don't sabotage yourself by dressing a certain way or acting a certain way and then expecting people to treat you at whatever level you want to be treated. You have to understand that if you walk in and you look, well, if you look like an asshole, people are going to treat you like an asshole. That doesn't mean you have to act like an asshole. And I think that's where people mess up. People walk in and they go, oh, uh, oh I'm not going to change for you. Fuck this. I'm not going to, you know, whatever. But don't do that. Like walk in there, look like an asshole, look or whatever, however you want to look. But then understand that they're going to treat you a certain way. They're going to look at you a certain way. They're going to expect probably very little from you or expect different than what you can deliver. But then you deliver and then you over deliver. And don't rest on the fact that Oh, well, they shouldn't treat me this way. People treat you a certain way. Just ask any African-American. Like people, people treat you a certain way. And it's not fair. And it's not right. And you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. But guess what? You judge a book by its cover. So it's your job to understand what your cover looks like. And then let people see the content in the pages. Don't let people get stuck on the cover and don't act like whatever, don't act like the cover. Act like who you are, act like what you want, because whatever you want is, is what you can go out and get. And if you, if you, if you lower your standards to what other people think of you based on how you look, where are you going to be? And then you're not being true to yourself. So dress how you want to dress, but understand how other people are perceiving you, how they're going to treat you, and then navigate around that. And once you understand this, there is no reason for you not to navigate around it. Don't be hard-headed, okay? You want to walk into that office and you want to look a certain way or you want to walk into that environment and you want to look a certain way. You have to understand what it is, what position you're putting yourself into. What you do with that position is up to you. You can either stay in the position that they put you in or you can navigate around it and be successful and not have any issues and you be you and keep it 100 so I really do think looks are huge. I think it comes down to your confidence in yourself and it comes down to you understanding how you look to people around you. And if you can navigate those two things, if you can make yourself feel good, if you can be confident in the rooms that you walk into and you can understand how people are perceiving you, then you can navigate through pretty much anything and you'll be that person in the room, you'll be that person in the bar, you'll be that person in the meeting that they walk in the room and people go, they have something. I don't know what it is, but they have something. All right. If you have any other questions, hit me up on Snapchat, Twitter. You can leave some comments uh, down here at the bottom of the video. 
and feel free to ask anything. And I promise if I don't have an answer for you, I'll communicate with you that I don't have an answer. And uh, see you next time. And she was like, who? And he was like, nah. And we was like, what? Go, go, go.